All right, so I want to show a problem uh, in Unity structures, a place where we can easily shoot ourselves in the foot in projects, and I have seen this in expensive projects. And I'm talking about prefabs and their overrides. So I've joined projects where we've suddenly, ha where I've opened up a prefab on a scene instance and seen 20 or 30 overrides sitting in there. Most of the time, it's only a handful. Um, but the question is, this override for this box collider for setting it to is trigger, is this supposed to be part of the instance or is it supposed to be part of the prefab? Who knows? You know, let's think about what it takes to know. You have to know what what is the purpose of this object? How is it being used? What is the purpose of the prefab? How does it generally get used? Uh, what are the feature requests that have come in to make alterations to either this specific object, this scene, this silo of stuff, or, well, yeah, the, those key things. What You have to know all of that to be comfortable making a change after the fact to mark whether or not this is supposed to become part of the source prefab. Otherwise, maybe you are injecting something that's going to change default behavior somewhere else. And so basically, we're kind of creating spaghetti code in our Unity project organization. And it is scary when there's like 20 or 30 of these things and you're coming in as a developer, a new Unity developer on an existing project. And I'm not talking about just junior developers. I'm talking about like expert programmers, expert Unity developers coming into projects are not going to be able to understand whether or not this is supposed to be there or not. Um, and it would take time and investigation to figure that out. So what are some of the things that we can do? What are some of the, the areas that we can, how we can deal with this? Uh, one is when you're making your changes, make sure you're actually inside of the prefab editor. Get inside of the prefab editor and make that up here. So in the side of the prefab editor, I can make my changes. I can't edit the position. I can't, inside of this one, I can't drag in a reference to some other object. So if I have a script in here, uh, let's see, can I put something in there? Uh, selection manager. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, do we have something? I, I don't know what I can pull in that would have reference to another object in a scene. Um, Oh, uh, on player entry, there we go. Something with an event. Um, so on player entry that I can drag an object. Oh, I need an object in here. I can't drag anything in there, so I can't do that in here. Um, that's great, I don't want to be able to do that in here. Uh, autosave, that's a questionable item as to whether or not you have autosave in here because I don't necessarily want autosave. Uh, I just put this in here. I want to get rid of this object. I'm going to remove it. Uh, now I need to hit the save button. So I'm going to go back to, let's, but I, I don't, I skipped that. I go back to junk floor. Excellent. It asks me to save this. I'm going to discard my changes. I don't want any of the changes to be in there, except where was I with that? I think that put in a confusing place because look, there it is on every single prefab now, uh, because I happened to change it at that point in time. So let's go back into this one and I'm just going to fix that and let's get rid of this particular component. Remove. Anyway, the purpose of that particular one, and let me put autosave back on for now, it's my preference. The purpose of that particular one is that you can't drag in other scene references to a prefab. It doesn't retain them, it doesn't store them. Honestly, it could, but the point of a prefab is, uh, part of the point of a prefab is that you can drag it into multiple sets of scenes. Um, you can still serialize that stuff and bring it back and pull the, the same stuff back up so you can have references sitting in scriptables and that'll be fine. But once you leave the game, it goes away. If that object is no longer there, the reference will disappear from the scriptable. Um, anyway, not the point of this part. So inside of here, I make your changes inside of here, but sometimes you still need to work with stuff and only leave this to make your changes to prefabs if you are making one of those changes where you have to have a reference to some, to some other element inside of the scene that you want to make a change to. Um, now, of course, I don't actually want this. I'm gonna to go to my overrides and I am going to revert all. Uh, 
One nice thing that shows up in here are changes that exist. I just want to call this out. When there are changes that show up on a particular instance of a prefab, um, you can see that. You see the little blue line here? If I select that, I can see, oh, look, I've got changes here. There's changes to snap assist. There's changes to, uh, what was the other one? To scale. Let's go into this, click override, transform, changes to scale. I didn't change anything to scale and it happens to match other ones. But this must have been one of the earlier objects, actually it is one of the earlier objects I added where I may have changed the scale and brought it back. Uh, so I'm gonna revert this one because I don't care about that. Uh, snap assist, what is snap assist doing? Everything in here matches the standard that I put on other ones. Oh, actually it doesn't. Um, the fact that it exists at all is what's there. <laughs> I wanted snap assist on everything. Um, anyway, uh, so that's a good call out. I can see that it's here and I can question that. It's good to clean up your stuff just to check through, see if there's anything in there. But sometimes, again, these overrides, you don't know whether or not they're supposed to be there. And there's not line by line uh, injection into the prefab. You have to go into the prefab and manually do it. So anytime you want one of those changes, please don't make your edits here. I kind of wish that if you started editing an instance, that that might be a great way to deal with this. That as soon as you start editing an instance inside of here, uh, it actually lets you know, are you sure you want to be editing the instance? That you actually have to click a temporary button or something. You click it, uh, allow changes, and then you go make your change. So it becomes a habit. You just click there and then don't think about it. Um, so you can quickly make your changes that are only to that instance of it. But there's no solution right now. This is something you have to think through, you have to pay attention to, or you're gonna create problems where you don't know if things need to be checked in. And uh, if you do check things in, are you gonna be destroying things in other parts of the project? It's hard to manage, it's up to you. But keep an eye on it.